everyone, this is Nitro. It's now day 11 since I first unlocked Thor, and Thor has hit level 25. A few things. First of all, I can't help but notice that from level 25 to 26, it now costs 9,328 Gold of the Abyss. The 499 pack gave you 6,500 Gold of the Abyss, so the experience required or the number of Gold of the Abyss required has already surpassed the 499 pack, right? So yeah, this cost just keeps scaling up like crazy. From 24 to 25, it was like 6,077 experience. So it increased more than 50%. Kind of crazy. In any case though, in terms of the skills I picked using the Star Soul well, first, from the start, I branched off to the right, picking up hero attack plus 9, and then the soldier attack plus 2%. Towards the top, I just branched off a little bit to get plus 3 attack and plus 3 int. And then I went, the rest of the resources I've unlocked so far, I went southwards. So unlocking soldier attack plus 3% here, unlocking hero attack plus 6, and then just further going down to get like a hero attack plus 1% and hero int plus 9. The next branch then will be getting this Thor defense plus 4, or Thor defense that costs 4, picking up hero magic defense plus 6, and then picking up the hero int plus 12. So those are my next three techs, which will probably happen as I hit level 30. And then only after that will I go to the north side. So in terms of the Covenant stat increases, Soldier attack has been maxed out at 6%. Hero attack is at 18 out of 30. Int is at 12 out of 30. So as soon as I get the Hero int plus 12 tech, it'll be at 24. And the Hero attack tech in the far north for plus 12 would raise that to 30 as well. Pretty much picking up all the offensive oriented stats so far, and it's going pretty smoothly. Now, with that said, since I hit level 25, let's begin Kingdom of the Aurora. So I might as well just quick claim. And this unlocks the next area. The Covenant missions 5-1, 5-2, 5-3. Five, so let's start with 5-1. Oh, I can't full rewards will give me 8,568 gold of the abyss, so that will let me level up to level 26. Let's start. Yes. So, hey. first things hey. first. Action bow. Then, and act again. And why don't I just righteous duel the first enemy to me? Yulia just got the menace strike. Get the kill. Now I'm not looking to attack with the other characters this first time. Because I don't really want to move into the range of all these enemies. So we'll just go back to this. Okay. So, Leden's aura is disabling the Stone Colossi guard. Interestingly enough. I'm not sure why the Stone Colossi didn't move here. But, uh, even if it did, you could move Leaden in to just melee strike hey. to start. Hey. Register does last two turns after all. Have Yulia discipline strike. Heal my Leaden to full. And then... Rain of Glory. That's Sword Soul. We killed the Berserker. And finally, it's just the last two. 
double checking her talent. She will act again if there's one or less enemy within two blocks. So the only way to trigger the act again is to probably range attack here to start. Kill yourself. Uh oh. That was not expected. All right. Because my skill, my heal skill, got the same. And also, Leaden did not guard yes. because he has a minus two mobility effect. It looks like the Rock Golem also applies a minus two mobility yes. effect. Oops. Right, fair enough. What I get for not paying attention to those skills. Of course. Not a huge issue. Right. Let's just have... Shuri attack, kill, trigger an act again, yes. or not. Oh right, I already used the act again, that's why. We're on 5-2 of Interplanary Cloister. So there is a feat to get where you have to win the battle from three turns. And all flyers get a 20% increased attack and defense. So let's begin. The 20% attack and defense is kind of annoying because it makes these dragon troopers be able to one-shot anything, especially when they use their Raging Thunder with Ride the Wind. So I'm bringing lots of characters that are capable of one-shotting them, like Narm with roundabout aim and deadeye, like Omega who can just strike at the Dragon Trooper directly, and I also have Sigma. So Zerda will be the meter faction buff, and then Leon will be here to kill off these pure infantry Shika Masters. So let's just get started. Action order-wise, yeah. So Sigma first, then Zerda, Narm, Omega. Let's have Omega move before Narm. Have Narm maybe move last? Or no. Yeah, let's have Narm move last. Let's go. Okay. So Sigma is probably gonna just lock on to uh, the infantry in the bottom right. That should be the last character alive. Zerda? Faction Bot. Omega is going to shoot the Then Omega needs to shift forward to here. One, two, three, four, five to avoid this dragon trooper. And this one. One, two, three, four, five. So this is a safe tile. Then let's have Narm move up. Trigger aim. Dead eye strike the dragon trooper. And if I move back here, I will be safe because this infantry will be dead. And then finally, Leon is going to chivalry. Assault the Shika Master. And run forward. Turn two. Three enemies left. Why don't I just have... 
Sigma. Fight the Dragon Trooper and fail to kill it. Huh. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Omega can one shot that Dragon Trooper. And move out of the range. Hold on. One, two, three. This is good enough. Narm can finish off that Dragon Trooper and wait. Yerda can part of Alhazar. And I just got this final infantry dude to kill. On turn 50. Success, basically. Uh, let's start with Omega. He's actually enough to one shot. There we go. Win within three turns. 100,000 gold. And then we're into the final battle. 5 3 Interplanary Cloister. Defeat four enemies in four turns. Less than two allied heroes are killed. And the enemies have physical and magic damage taken is reduced by 80%, but fixed damage is increased by 100%. Okay, so give me a moment to make sure my Listelle has a Sword Swift medal. Because she normally just runs the speed boots now. But keeping her at full hit points will be quite important for this thing, I think. There we go. And we're gonna go back. And clear this battle where you have to use fixed damage. Just gonna have her aim up. Maybe just her leader. And then her exclusive will let her move two tiles back. And I'm going to mostly just wait the first turn because I'm still regrouping my characters. Could try. Placing Freya in range though. I think that's worth the experiment with the Right, no guarding. Fortunately, they can weaken enough that Sophia manages to somehow tank and kill due to Freya's fixed damage impact. That dance. Uh, 
I'm going to aim up here. And maybe just tornado her. Have Freya hit them with a rose again. To generate. And finally, since she already has the healing light, I'm just going to focus on healing up Sophia. Next damage. Reflect. Thorns, counter arrow, rose queen, everything hit with fixed damage that I can. Some buffs get stolen. And there we go. Mass fixed damage succeeds. And there we are. With all the feats. So that's it for the third, the fifth part of Thor's uh, Kingdom of the Aurora. So this one gives 153 co Covenant Commission efficiency. You get another seat and the 8,000. So I can add another character into the seats. It was 20 increased last time, now it's 53. So a big jump in the covenant efficiency. And with uh, 33 plus 153, you got 186 more uh, gold of the abyss per hour. So it's it really is a necessary jump given how much the cost of leveling up has increased. But it will certainly help level up Thor faster. And that was also enough to level him up another one. So, wow, look at the scaling, it's crazy. 10,447 is the next level. Oh, I got three more Thor Star Souls, but going to have to wait before I actually unlock something useful. It's gonna need 16 to finish up this branch. So that's gonna take a while. In any case, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found it useful, and on that note, Nitro out.